of chocolate. Bright, brilliant, and articulate. Strong and bold. I am gifted, talented enough to be the best. I am an African child. Often the target of pity. My future is not confined to charity. Give me a gift of a lifetime. Give me a dream, a door of opportunity. I will thrive. I am an African child. Do not hide my fault. Show me my wrong. I am like any other. Teach me to dream and I will become. I am an African child. I am the son, daughter of the soil, rich in texture and content, full of potential for a better tomorrow. Teach me, teach me, teach me hard work. Teach me to think like the star within me. I am an African child. I can be extraordinary. Call me William Gamgwamba, the inventor. Give me a library with books. Give me a scrapyard and discarded electronics. Give me a broken bicycle, plus the freedom to be me, and I will build you a windmill. I am an African child. We are the new generation. Not afraid to be us. Uniquely gifted. Black and talented. Like the stars we are. We are the children of Africa, making the best of us. Yes, I am an African child. I am an African child. Dumela Ashe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning, no matter what the time is on your side. Ekaso, whatever the language you speak all over Africa, with this and we welcome everyone to today's broadcast. This is the African Portal Radio, your one stop media house where everyone has a say. It's going to be another beautiful time today to the new week. We starting this week in a high tone. I will start it with a very, very important topic where we'll be talking about the African child and we'll be talking about a book that is selling all over the world, a book that is actually important for every African citizen to get a copy. A book written by one of the genius in Africa, a book telling the story of African child, a book written by one of the intelligent son of the soil. Welcome to the African Portal Radio, where everyone have a say. It's going to be another brilliant time on this radio. And I welcome everyone joining all, all over the world, all over Africa. Please join this broadcast, share it, let it go far. For those of you that are just coming in, just in singular favor, please program. We are expecting a lot of people to call on this program and watch this program. We expect a lot of people to join this broadcast because it's all about Toyo Free Craig, one of the African uh, legend, one of the African intellectual, one of the African brilliant child, one of the African great icon, and we see him on the African Portal Radio, your one-stop media house, where everyone has. Welcome to the African Porter, everyone. Good afternoon. If you time in America, good morning. In England, good afternoon. In Nigeria, good afternoon. In Yoruba land, and if you don't need Karo Dibosho, Karo Shomadi, if you don't come at it, go for now. Me, if you don't eat, to me, if you don't eat, we have a store. 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 Ekubogo <laughs> Your money or your capacity, you play to do it here. 
Back. I hope everyone joining us is enjoying this broadcast. Sorry, the network is a bit giving a challenge, but uh, so you'll see, just stay in one place so that we can be able to track down your network and connect to your uh, send you a better signal as you are moving up and down. We are unable to get exactly the poor, I mean, the points where we can stretch your network to. Uh, yeah, I think it should be fine now. Uh, can you please? Let people know that you're already on the African portal. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to be here today. And yes, I'm already online. Hmm. Yes, you're online. We can hear you now. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, yes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still a secret. Yeah, go ahead. And thanks for the opportunity to present this book and then to speak about our fashion. Yeah, things that affect Africa generally. It's something I'm always wishing to talk about. And then 
whatever affects Africa, I take it as uh, one of the things that affects me. So I'm glad to be here. It's even load shedding that we are all talking about mm. now. Mm. <laughs> so it's an opportunity to speak about. Hmm. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, your, your network seems to be kind of very, very low, and we couldn't hear you very well in the studio. Is it my, uh, is just is it move my closer part? to is your... Uh... Yeah, okay, we can hear you now. We can hear you now, but the network seems not to be very good. You are in South Africa, and I'm expecting that we should have a better network here in south africa uh thanks to everyone joining us we're going to see how we are going to relaunch uh to us and greg into this broadcast again the network is giving a kind of problem in on the side but we are going to relaunch him back into the studio thanks to everyone joining this broadcast it's going to be a beautiful time in the studio i hope it's fine now uh let's just manage whatever we have for now from your side in the studio is already stable time? and it's already ready to go I can, ah, yes okay this is better yes so we're good to go let's talk about it let's talk about one of the important book that anyone needs to go and grab a copy and actually keep a copy and listen to it and keep it for the next generation. Let me quickly take you this way. Uh, who you are, where you are, uh, which position do you hold in the society? Okay, if you can hear me well, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you, yes. Okay. Okay, my name is Teo Teo I'm in the business of providing solar energy to Africans, I mean, making energy available to all Africans. And we're now trying a model in which they don't have to pay up front. I will provide you with the solar energy and you just pay monthly over the years, just like you are higher purchase for cars or for food. So I'm an engineer by training. I'm a doctor of engineering with few innovations. But I've taken it upon myself that um, out of the many challenges facing Africa, energy assets and food uh, and hunger are those two things that I want to face. So I'm currently with Block Power. And what Block Power does is to provide solutions to every African. It's a, it's a very interesting opportunity in which we are trying to, for example, in South Africa, the only African, sub-Saharan African country that has good electricity is now suffering from lots of load shedding. So that's where we come in, to give clean energy to everyone. And since I've had some innovations in it, um, I'm happy with what I do, so that's currently what I do. Moving across African countries, providing electricity for them. Because like we know, nothing works without power. So yeah, that's what I do. I'm also an author of a book, which we're discussing here today. So, yeah, but well, my vision is Africa, making Africa better and putting smile on every African face. Mm, mm, mm. Thank, thank you for that. I, I, li I like the way and the tempo you start ways, uh, most especially the one of the common problem in Africa, which is the lack of power electricity problem in Africa is one of the greatest problem in Africa and most of African country, if I don't make a mistake, I think 96% of African countries are facing electricity problem. And uh, you are the solution to that, uh, as you say in our previous interview with you. And are working day and that uh, change the narrative of you wrote a book, and that is one of the things that I actually saw that's made me to uh, say I'm going to bring you onto the program so that we can talk a little about it. But before that, let, let, let's quickly take it this way. You, you seem to sound like the problem of electricity in Africa is, is I mean, you are solving. I mean, the problem is getting the solution. But uh, with the look of things, I, I don't really think that the problem is really uh, getting the solution because 
South Africa, you mentioned that is one of the country that there is a stable electricity. Uh, in the last few years, South Africa is experiencing low shedding and uh, it's affecting a lot of business. Uh, let's quickly look at it. Is there any progress in the last two years or that you can really record it, that it's happening in Africa? I mean, probably through your organization or through you or through any organization in Africa when it comes to electricity. Okay. Yeah, um, there is a major one that I'll discuss, and I'll also say, share a link that people can read about it. So what happened is because, I mean, we are growing as Africans, our population is increasing. However, we, we are not able to complement it with increased power supply. So that's why we are facing so many challenges. Hmm. It's now worse in South Africa. Uh, I was on Channel TV, the Nigerian TV station, I think last week or two weeks ago, where I predict, and I was also on that TV station during load shedding, I mean, during lockdown, where I said there's power in South Africa, but it's not the true reflection. People don't go to work. That's why they seem to be power. That when people resume, the electricity crisis is going to be so bad. So, when we all resume now, they are making it to look like a thing because exactly the way I predicted this is the way. Now, what we have done, what I can say we have done that has uh, to contributed our quota, I'll give you an example. There's a place called Chita Place. Um, it's in the Ushmalanga province of South Africa. It's a game reserve with a big lodge that consumes a lot of electricity. Now, many people would have lost their job because the electricity is always causing problems, it's always transformer issues. And the team that I worked with have been able to put up a total of this solution. So what we're able to do is we can take it off as completely, in which you have the solar and then you have the battery. And then uh, interestingly, I have the data for a whole one year to show that we have matched their demand 100% with solar for the last one year. So fridges in several weeks. Fridges, AC, pumps, generator, whatever they are using, totally powered. And that, that's something to be proud of. And the idea is to roll something like that out. Also, here in Waterfall, in South Africa, I mean, in Johannesburg, here in Waterfall, in Midran, in partnership with St. City, if you drive through that, I don't remember the name of the road, but if you are going from Joburg to Midran, you see those houses with lots of solar PV on their, on their roof. So they have PV and they have batteries. So what we do is, I mean, it's a very fancy system. You see it's so beautiful, you can position it to your house and you have free forever from the issue. So it's something that is working because we see that it's a bit expensive now. That's why we are trying to now finance it ourselves and then keep it pay over the month for years and then everybody is able to be free. So I'm happy that one way or the other, of course, the problem is so huge that you may not see the impact yet. But we're looking forward to rolling this out with further body corporates now. And if complexes are beginning to be independent of such things, then we will see more of this work out. So that's the progress we have made. And also mm. going into African countries, mm -hmm. um, we're starting that from January with the same solution. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank you for that input there. Thank you for that information you drop in the space. Uh, but I don't think that seems to uh, to answer my question because uh, you only talk about you know, drop uh, in the last few years. I realized that uh, the problem seems to like increasing instead of decreasing. Uh, what you say is good, and I like it. Uh, talking about solar energy and uh, some other, uh, 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 some other uh, space, I mean, or other uh, uh, alternative uh, way to generate electricity. But if you are talking about South Africa and you're talking about particular uh, uh, complex or estates in Johannesburg or in Midrand, how fast can this go so that uh, African can be able to be out of this? Because we have a lot of things, the mineral resources, 
sun is so i mean is shining in africa every day and since i mean with that we are still facing a lot of problem when it comes to electricity how fast yeah, can this happen uh, can this be able i mean can you guys be able to roll this out so that we can be able to at least to be on let's say please. Yeah, thank you very you much. Um, yes, I'm there. Thank you very much. I was going to to even show you where I am. Now. I'm currently in the workshop. <laughs> That's how it seems that we're walking up and down. We're working a lot. For example, mm. we're having a project currently in Zimbabwe that is taking another huge plant that people would have lost their job or company would have lost income if they were not, if they were still connected to the grid. So there's a project, we have some guys despite the COVID that have resumed work, got to go to quarantine and do the rest to make projects work in Zimbabwe. So the, the issue is this, like I said, the infrastructures that Africans are using is the ones that are offered as you. If you see Nigeria, for example, Nigeria, you would have seen that there's many noise that has been said about power. So they built new power plants. But the wire, the network that we have, is the one that the Awolo walls and the rest of them have built several years ago. So we have power, but we cannot evacuate. Mm. So there's a lot of complex problems that are involved. But it's not rocket science that cannot be solved. Like I said, we are small. We're doing the little we can. But now we have had opportunity to roll out. I gave the example of the one in Midran because I know it's the one cruise that you would have seen. The first one I gave was with Malanga. Uh, earlier yesterday, I had a call with someone that was speaking about how United Nations can help roll this system into villages. Because what we have, you can just bring, you'll be surprised that you can just bring the whole container into a village, and the whole of the village have electricity to at least for the next 30 years. So it's that simple. And we've done it so, I don't know, maybe later in the program, I'll be able to show you one or two things. And it's just a very fanciful box. There's no wire showing up and down. It's just, and they can even monitor it from their phone. You can see the sun when the sun is shining. You can see what you are using mm. in your house. And that's why I said, because many people are working from home now, we have developed a model, which I'm actually the one leading that strategy, uh, where we are able to partner with different complexes. I mean, there are over tens of thousands of complexes across Africa. The same will be in Nigeria. We will call it estate. So it will be that people, instead of subscribing to Nepal or this, to subscribe to us, will be the ones supplying you power. So we don't mind. We are able to finance it ahead for you. So you will just be paying your monthly bills, just like you are recharging your phone every month. And then you get the electricity. So that's the strategy going forward. And we believe it's going to work and it's going to help a lot of Africans out of this. Aspect. And finally, we have even developed, we have okay, now a product for uh, people that can't afford something expensive where we can just pick it up and then you can use it at your house. So that is one. And you can just plug a small PG to it and you're mm -hmm. out of that. Okay, uh, let's take it this way. How soon can this be, I mean, can, can you get this done? How soon? It's, 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 it's ready to go. We've um, there's a complex I'm already visiting on Wednesday to start rolling it out. So it's not, I'm not telling you what will be done. I'm telling you what we have started already. So there is a complex in Brighton that's already getting signed up. Yeah. Um, I'm ready now. It takes two to three weeks. Once you sign up for it, the body cup. The issue is people say they want something, but when it comes to signing papers and getting committed, you'll be surprised how people get to push back, right? So the problem is the owner of the flat wants it. But it makes more sense when the body corporate, the owner of the estate, or the owner of the complex is come together because if one wants it, the other doesn't want it, it comes to come. But once the body corporate is ready, like, okay, we have 10 buildings in our complex, we sign for it, we supply us electricity for the next 10 years, perfect. In two weeks, we are done with the turnover time, two weeks, three weeks, you we are connected and you are free from that. So I'm not telling you what will be done. I'm telling you, if I can switch my camera and I'll show you the panels are here, the boxes for the inverters are here, even the, the tractors to move them and everything is here, right here where I'm standing. So <laughs> it's ready to go. Mm, 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 mm. 
Oh, th thank you very much for that. I, I just that that is just by the way. That is not where I'm actually going to. Uh, I just go through that just to lay a kind of foundation for people to have the great work you are doing in Africa continent. Let's quickly go into the business of today, which is the book that you are about to launch on Friday. And it's going to be an awesome time. I'm going to join you as well at that book launch. Uh, but let's quickly talk a bit about it. What is this book and why this book at times such as this? Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to discuss about it. So the idea of the book got conceived when I was sharing my story from how I grew up from the innermost of the innermost villages to where God has brought me to. And the idea is to encourage both young people and their parents, no matter what you are facing, that as an African, you are born to be great. There's a spirit of greatness in you. That's why we go through the campus to where no man will be able to. I mean, it shows that if you conceive an idea, you can go through it with the grace of God and support of me. The idea of the book is not to be entitled, not to look because somebody didn't help you, then you can't make it in life. The idea of the book is, number one, to make the parents of, maybe you have a stubborn child. I was very stubborn as a boy. <laughs> you have a stubborn child, you'll be amazed that it shows how you can channel the boys, the, the children's stubbornness to greatness. Also, if you have children with either sickness or some, I was also a very sick child. So either you have children with special abilities or any things like that, or even if it's special gifts, because uh, if I can say it in Yoruba, as a child, which I detailed, explained there. It could be because I read a lot of Agua's book as a mm. child. So I mm. promoted our culture so much that you can see like the value of, of whatever gift a child has. I could see vision a lot. And then because uh, there was now a time that my father had to call me and say, no, if you keep talking about all these things like this, you will get all of us killed. So he told me how to manage it and how to be a man. So those, you know, those are the things that are now channeled to my innovation life. Like I even explained there how I was able to do the solar machine that I did here in South Africa. One day, what happened? So, and then I showed the story of my life, how I faced one or two things, my parents, my siblings, how we went through hell, but eventually led to greatness. So that's the whole idea. The book, the idea of the book is anybody going through anything in life, just read the book, read a few paragraphs of it, and then you get inspired. So that's the whole idea. And it came to like your question that hmm. why is it coming to at this time? I wrote the book in 2018, intentionally only for Nigerian audience. But I was doing a book review somewhere in Paris and then in UK and then in, I mean sorry, and then in America and then some places and people were like, no, this book is actually global. So I took time again earlier in the year to relate it to a global audience. And I think it's the best time to release it now mm. because, I mean, it shows the value of education. Because I know, yes, people are going into IT, physical center, entrepreneurs don't go to school. I make sure the book shows that you can still make it that book. You just need to be smart with going to school. So, and yeah, it's, it's a tool. Like somebody said, somebody said it's a tool. Like one of the senators that read it said, no. He wish he had read this book before raising his children because it also showed that if you are rich, you shouldn't spoil your children because uh, it, 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 I, I believe it's a great book that everyone needs. Hmm. 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 Uh, thank, you, thank you very much, Toyosi. I, I, I like what you say about this book and it's, it's really, really amazing. I have gone through it as well. I've read through it. A lot of people have already signed up that they are coming to be part of that launching on on Friday. And uh, a lot of people already say a lot about this book. I, I just want to hear you from your home uh, personal view. What exactly, a part of your experience, a part of your how you grow up, about the kind of person you are, you are such a kind of person that Yoruba call Ogunogongo, you are such a person that uh, Yoruba call Ologbon, a person that Yoruba call Onim, because you, you, you are so just, you are so deep into what you are doing and you make sure that you do it well. Uh, why, why, why exactly, I mean, what exactly uh, bring this out of you? Why do you decide to put it in the book form? Okay. 
And um, in one of the chapters of the book is Toyo Timit Awolowo. Another chapter of the book is Toyo Timit uh, uh, Faleki. Another chapter of the book is uh, Toyo Kibaso Kikun. So I use the book, one of the things I use the book to show is to show the stress of Nigeria. I was denied a visa to go to the United Kingdom in 2012 to get an award when I made the first funded Yambeki machine. The reason they gave me was I didn't have fight in Nigeria. I didn't even plan to travel out. It was an all expensive state. I was rejected twice. And since that day, I said, what? When God makes me who I want to be, I won't go to UK until I get an apology from the embassy. And God has blessed me. I've been to every major land, land scale in the world. I've been to every major country, but I've never been to the UK. And that thing would not have pained me so much until I heard the story of a woman whose child had leukemia. And the, the father was a British, she was a Nigerian, so the, the daughter automatically was British. So she was based in the UK, but the father died. So the woman went back to Nigeria. Long story short, the girl was sick with cancer. They needed her mother to come. They denied the woman visa over 17 to 20 times. People even stood as guarantors that we will stand, mm. they still denied the woman. And then the girl died, the woman never saw her child. The woman never remained the same for the rest of her life. I'm not mm. sure she's still alive. So I use that to now express what Nigerians are facing. Like people have to lie to get visa, which is not supposed to be. If you're going to take money from people, you need to do enough. If you have to employ people, employ more because you take so many applications, you don't even check it, you just throw it out. Not every, yes, there are so many Nigerians out there that will never come to, but each person has their own value. If you are collecting their money, you need to do their applications individually. So I explained that, and one of my friends that I even mentioned in the book, who used to be a British citizen, lost his British citizenship because he couldn't appear in the embassy while he was in Ibadan. The boy called me like a few weeks ago. He had to suffer before going back to Europe, to France, and the rest, but now he got back to British citizenship last year because he's now a doctor. So he called me and said, thank you for putting my story out there. He screenshot me, he took the picture of the British passport and sent to me. Now, he's just one of the many. That is one reason why I wrote the book, to show what Nigerians are facing and not to generalize. Number two would be my encounter with Awolo. Of course, I didn't meet Awolo. He died the year I was born. I didn't even know. But I always had a joke like, Awolo had to die for me to come to life, like a joke. But the, wound, the day I went to meet Mamai Kai, the Awolo blessed memory, I just cracked that joke. And the woman was like, seriously, do you know that? She has had a dream over 10 years ago that somebody was going to come and say what I've said. Like, uh, me and I, I will all have to die in the night itself because I was going to be born. Two of us cannot be here. And she was like, have you seen the tomb? And that day, we tried to see the tomb of Aulaw. They said, no, they have not open it for anybody in two years. Even the governor came to didn't open it. So my mom called them. So I was like, I, I tried to go there. I went to there, witnessing mm. to this event. Mm. I went there with my friends and family, some of them, in my NGO. So Mama told them that they had to open the tomb, that Baba has told her in a dream, over 10 years, that the boy will come, will say this, you need to open the, the tomb. So they opened the tomb, we went down there, it's down to the house. You will be shocked. There is a Bible verse, I believe, that is like the story of my life, kind of, that I don't often share. When I got there, I saw it open on the tomb. It's like the last chapter that man read before he died. I was so lost there. It's like exchange of buttons. That I know people don't believe in African ish stuff, but I am an African. I really believe in African power. Right? So I was the Kodakwe, you know, Mumi Mobin and Mogon Pasibe. My friends have left. They had to come back and call me before I came back tonight. So I came out of that, knowing that <sighs> there's more than what I what I used to think I am that there's more to do. The man did not finish anything. So that's when I realized that there's more to our Lord. Said. The man really didn't finish what he was meant to finish. So I now know that our Lord wrote all these things down. I better start writing everything I'm setting down. Because at least I've gone to meet all these big men, asking them their dreams about the country and their vision for Africa. Tomorrow we'll say, ah, the earlier the better. So that's why one of the other reasons why I also shared the book. I shared the story. 
So and then I, I, I and I, I just for people to know my school of thought and then to inspire anybody. I know we are a man of history. Because if we don't see our history, other people will write our history for us in a way we don't like. So those are some of the deeper things that are also in this. You sound very, very well on that explanation you are giving there. It's giving me a lot of a lot of joy because you know when the when this generation uh, when we have person I mean like you is a great blessing to the nature. Uh, let's take it this way. I read something about what the former press secretary to uh, former first ladies in Ogun State say. Tope uh, give it back. A the book and uh, talking about your naughty and what you have done for your society. Let's quickly look at it. Uh, with this experience and everything putting together in the book, a lot of people will be grabbing the book. I don't know, maybe you have a copy there that we can just put on the screen for people to see the back cover of the book. Uh, if you have the front cover of the book, can you please just display it so that people will, can be able to, to see what we are talking about. Can you please show the front cover of it? The front cover? The front cover. Okay. Uh, I'm listening to this broadcast. I hope you see. Uh, this is the book we are talking about. It's going to launch it coming Friday. And it's going to be an awesome time. This is Omoto Yossi, the, the, the child of the light. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you can remove it now. Let me see your face so that we can have the conversation. Uh, Thank you very much. I, I, I like everything about this book and I like everything about your personality. This is my second time bringing you back on to this uh, radio station. Last time when we had the conversation where you explained about your journey, where you went from how you grow up, the kind of background and uh, your parents' parents to send you to school. But what makes me happy is that you're having your PhD at the age of uh, 33 or so, even below that. Uh, I, I'm so happy for your achievement and I'm so happy for you. But let's take it this way. Uh, many people read this book and many people speak to me. I try to speak to a lot of people about it. And one question they have is this. They say, what exactly are you trying to gain from writing this book? Okay. Thank you so much for that question. It's the first part of many series to come. Right? So like I said, there's a, I believe there's a commission in my hand. The idea is for Africa. Right? Um, I want to leave at the end of the day when I die, I want to look back at Africa and say, yes, we have done it. Imagine the feelings, those people that got independence for Africa, the feeling they felt, because they were all young people in the 1960s, late 50s. All those big men from Tanzania, Julius Nyerere, or even Mugabe when they were in their prime, to the ones in Nigeria, to Kwame Nkrumah, you know? And most of these things were, the stories were written by other people, not even by them. Some of them wrote their own stories, but most of the stories were written by other people. So this is the journey that I'm taking through people through with me. Um, remember, my son's name is Craig. There's no African that is a Craig to start with. So in Yoruba, there, I wrote mm. in the book that there are two philosophies. Either Kujepe, uh, one big Baba Baba Meleru they have to buy their own freedom to come back. And then three days, an Oriki that says Craig don't want to be could be that. Or the second one would be uh we book on wale, or more do con those who are be a uncle Craig. So if you don't know, because the history was not written. You understand? So I can't trace my heritage mm. by my ori oriki me as a well molad is a molad and the well is molad in the yes, that is Yoruba, but Craig is not Yoruba. So there are so many gray areas in our history which we have to start correcting now. Mm. So that's why I wrote my encounter with nature, my encounter with principles, my personal encounter. So then we see any there's no there's no for example the Yoruba person that will read this book that will not appreciate the value of our culture, from the value of naming ceremony to dedication of a child. So all those things are stages I laid out in the book. So the idea for the book is, for me, 
Uh, it's a journey. This is the first part. I've not achieved so many. There are only, I just have only five people on my scholarship scheme. I mean, this is not where I want to be. I want to have thousands. I want to have thousands that we also give thousands scholarship to other people, right? So, because I didn't have mm. uniform, I'm, I'm now mm. making uniform available to secondary schools, right? But that is not the ultimate. That's not where I'm going. It's mm. just a journey. So this is the story of how it started. So the next one that will come out, let's say in five or ten years time, will be the story of how far we have come. And then it will encourage so many others that have opportunities mm -hmm. like me. One, not to forget where they are coming from, not to become so unnecessarily proud or you now feel that motivated to buy new one or see the island. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So this will charge everybody to know that this course of mm -hmm. Africa, we are in it together. And at the last chapter of the book, near near, but I want to book mm -hmm. course, even if it's one naira. Sometimes you may not have money, but you have a dear. It's a Yoruba movie I watched that brought me to South Africa. Mm. I've told you that story before. So whatever you are doing, you don't know who is going mm. to affect. Said Balogun and myself have never met. But it was his movie that inspired me to come to South Africa. Babadele Odile is coming on Thursday. I mean, mm. on Friday mm. for the launch. I've never met Babadele Odile before, but he's the one that gave me the phone number of Professor... Adebay of Aleti, which all connected to where I am today. In the book, I wrote how the man went to scam man to get me the phone hmm. number. So me, saying, God has blessed me, I can always get the number of anyone I want to get to me. So I reached out to Baba. I showed him the book. He was like, he can't even remember when he helped me. We became very good friends now. And when I go, hmm. one of the people on this. So hmm. he, 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 the culture of uh, she said that by the relay, I'm not the full one, I'm not the full one, I'm not the full one, I'm not So that's the idea the book is all about. I like that. I like that. That sounds very, very interesting. Um, to the kind of people that you're already connected with and uh, a lot of comments that you are getting back. That is actually giving me joy because that is the proof that uh, this is a divine inspiration and is a divine direction. But let's quickly look at Africa. I mean, in the content, uh, don't you think that the issue of these uh, borders in Africa is going to be one of the limits to for you to be able to spread your wings, especially with the project in your head? Don't you think that will be a kind of barrier? Or what is your own view towards that? Uh, you have spoken my mind. For you to have said this means you are very well back. You understand what is going on in the industry, I mean, in, the, in the Africa. Our Latin, the, the boundaries were not created by our father. It was enforced on them. Hmm. Our cultures, our basic values are still the same. We are Africa, we are one. So somebody woke up in Berlin, they said Berlin are caught, they divided our land among themselves. And that division has caused so many problems where we are today. Where I was working before I joined this company, mm. I, am now that I'm part -time. I used to manage sub Saharan Africa for the country, for the company, the Spanish company. Now, it was more difficult for me to go between African countries than to go to Europe. Now, I mean, with Nigerian passport, mm. I was able to go to Europe, go to America, go to anywhere I want to go. Like, I can apply in the matter of calling the ambassador. Like, um, I have a work permit in Spain, but I need to do this, do this, do this in this country. Please, can, can I get an expedited visa in the next 24 hours? I need to be on the phone. You will be amazed. They will ship it to you, DHL. Your visa is ready. But let me try it with an African hmm. country. I will tell you one thing that happened to me in 2018. I was in Tanzania. We had a very nice project. I was helping the Royal Education Authority as, uh, uh, or agency as well as... Um, they would have their utility. We had a project to do for them. Then Nigerians can travel to South East Tanzania and you get visa at the point of entry. You will be amazed that a month later, they gave me a single entry visa, so it expired when I came back. A month later, I've divided the design the document. I was on my way to go. And they just told me at the airport, I can't enter the plane. Ah, 
Mum Kilo a day, what happened? I was still here last month. They said, Yes, you were here last month, but you need a visa. I said, No, you get visa at the point of entry. Life for a week. They had to send me home. They lost a trip. They, they, they banned Nigeria from entering Tanzania without applying for visa 30 days earlier. I had to call a friend that is Spanish. The Spaniard is the one that now took all the documents he created and took it to Tanzania. So it was easy for him to be moving within Africa and me that I'm African. I'm not allowed to. I was denied Zambian visa. That's why my status. I was denied Zambian visa six times. Six times. I was going to Zambia ah. to help them. I was denied visa six times. All in the name of Nigerian tradition. I said, all my visa, all my passport, you see a European work, you see me infinite European work permit. If I have an infinite work permit in Europe, what am I coming to see in Zambia? I was so angry, I said, no way, I'm not coming to Zambia for now. Because, I mean, what are we doing in that Africa? What are we doing? So, yes, you are correct, because I see my time is very limited now. You are correct. Uh, the boundary is going to be a problem, but like I see, there are a few people that are promoting it. One Africa was the, the only way to go forward because they were already by in 1950 to 1960. All those young people they fought together. Tanzania, Nigeria, everybody got mm. independent because they were young. So, and that is the only way to bring back our heritage and to succeed. But now we are still struggling. We are still, I won't lie to you. System that works in South Africa to take it to Mozambique to still a problem. So yeah, we are facing that. But I mean, as I said, it's our passion. We said uh, we are not going to give up. We are not going to give up. But African government needs to know that you no know, one is alone in this thing. Uh, AU passport is very needed. It's very needed. I mean, to Hmm. 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 Uh, uh, th th thank you very much for your response there. I, I think I'm going to make it a bit longer because you are touching some certain thing that is very important for African citizens, most especially ordinary African citizens in the street. You can imagine what you go through with all the certificates, with all the provisions, with what you want to offer to African brothers, see what you've gone through. Let, let's quickly look at the issue of the free, uh, free trade agreement that uh, country, I mean, African countries signed for. Do you think that we assist or do you think that will be a way out of this mess? Yeah, it will be. I mean, Europe did it. You see Europe, the reason why they started is France has still, I think uh, Germany has the gun, something like that. I can't remember. There's a reason why they had to come into agreement so that one will not fight the other. If we are serious with it, if you are serious with it, let's open the border. South, South Sudan only has one percent of the And it's a business opportunity for people mm. like me. I make them happy. I get it. I use it for another country. I go to a rich, I put another student palace there. Like, if you are serious with it, then we should go ahead with it. But we should not copy and paste what is happening elsewhere. We need to design an African system that works in an African way. Mm, mm, mm. I, I, I like that, and I want us to I want us to expatiate that a bit. Uh, we should not do a copy and paste idea with our own idea. That is, we must come up with a solution problem. We using our own prototype. We should not go and adopt anywhere else and bring it back to Africa as a way that we are going to solve our problem. Is is that what you are saying? Yes, we need an African solution. It's just like the way we copy democracy. Uh, our system works before we just copy and paste. Democracy now, the party will choose. We don't choose who we vote for. The party chooses who we vote for. And that's not an African way. So we, we copy. Yeah. You see China, they don't copy and paste. They copy and they edit before they paste. They bring it in. They look at which one fits our system. Yeah. Hmm. So one of the problems we have in Africa is that we just copy and we paste. We don't try to read and edit before we paste. So we just copy and paste. Like democracy, we just copy and paste. And uh, it's, it's the party that we tell you who to vote for. It's not you that we tell the party, this is what we want. 
is the party that will impose whatever they want for you that this is what we give you and that is what you are going to vote for so it's a paste is a copy and paste idea oh th thank you for that thank you for that there's still a lot uh, that we talk about uh, about that but let's just put that aside let's quickly focus on what is coming on friday because i want to use this time to call everyone all over africa please use book especially ordinary african citizens you have to go and grab the copy of the book because this book is going to ask going to help you you are going to see the book in you you are going to see why it's important that we read i mean we love ourselves and you have to see the uniqueness of who we are as black because many people look down on themselves when they see themselves carry this kind of color and they think maybe they were uh, they were less privileged and a lot of people walking around with their head bowed down and spreading hands out every time from people you can see that in african continent on hate from other parts of the world what, what, what are you working and what are you doing on that are, are you having a project working on that to stop this aid idea in africa giving aid to african continent to solve their problem are, are you working on that or probably in the nearest future uh, or you don't definitely, seem to see it as a definitely, problem definitely definitely uh, a man is not a man if he cannot screw his house even the bible say a man that cannot screw his house is worse than an infidel so ojo tawa di to mo pe ato dawa ojo en la ma ato dawa so once we still keep begging for food, of course, all mm. the wealth that these guys are giving us is also our money that they took by enslaving our fathers, right? But we don't need it. We have to be independent. That's what I'm saying. We are not giving solar for free. We will install it for you. You will sign an agreement as an early, and then you pay over monthly over the next month. So it's not like we are, I'm a point of it. So my idea could buy it. So the kind of land of entitlement is not there. So we will pro pro so that's how it's going to work. Um, we have to realize that electricity is not cheap, food is not cheap, agriculture is not cheap. We have to work by it ourselves and we have to pay for it. The culture of hard work and then we'll be fine. We don't need anyone because we are the owner of the resources anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We have so much intellectual uh, and a, a lot of wise people in Africa, and it's, uh, it seems that their effort is not showing so well. Look at it from this angle. A lot of people graduated from the university in Nigeria or in America, I mean, in Africa, of the grad university all over Africa. Why is it that Africa is still giving some of the projects? Like when it comes to construction, when it comes to uh, any infrastructure uh, in Africa, there still seems to like giving it out to other parts of the world. Uh, uh, what are you talking about on that? Because if you look at the graduates we have and the people go to university, are you saying that our education system is not supporting us? Or what exactly is the problem? We don't have any problem. We don't have any problem. We just need to trust one another. That's as simple as that. We don't have any problem. We just need to trust one another. Once we start trusting one another, when China started, we started with belt to power coal. That's what we used to say. Like this belt causes infertility. Nobody wanted to buy palito or carry it. That's where China started. But see them now. Everything is made from China. Let us face our own. They are better guys. I was shocked when I was in Nigeria. People that are even smarter than people that are anywhere in the world. But one of our work to the all around the world, Ebola to the world, we started from Nigeria. So Africans, we have the brain, we just need to trust ourselves because the business model of the world, of the, of the West, is for us to always come back to buy the machines from them to start our own resources. I'm sorry, I will, I will, I will, I will have to go. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, because it's just, it's just what you know. So before you go, we still have like eight minutes, like seven minutes. And we still have like seven minutes. Let's pick up on it. Let's quickly do a wrap up by putting the book on the spotlight. Tell people more about what is going to happen on Friday. Two minutes of your time, then we'll round up, then we'll call it a day. Tell them where to get the book, if they want to contact you, where the book is, on Amazon, and where to get the book. 
Yeah, for people that are outside Nigeria. Please quickly uh, tell the people. Outside South, outside South Africa, you can get it on Amazon. It will be delivered in one to two days. And um, if you are in South Africa, you can contact me directly for now. But for people in Nigeria, we're going to announce on Friday how to get it in the whole 36 states. So they'll be launching on Friday. It will be transmitted live on every media. But um, I think you can reach out to the host and then get to me. She can share the, call, the link to register. And then you can also follow on all my social media pages on Friday. We have two former governors and six senators and few House of Rep members. As well as some notable people in the society that will be part of the case, former ambassador, president ambassador. So we look forward to a great day. And yes, join us. I'll be happy. It's not going to be long. It's just one hour, 30 minutes to them. And yeah, we're going to take it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Toyosi Greg. Thank you for coming out to be part of this show. In wrapping up, what we are discussing is that Toyosi just launched, I mean, released a book. Please go out there, go and grab your copy. You can follow him as well on the social media. Just put his name on the Google. It's going to give you all the information you need about him. Regarding the book, a lot of people are coming, senators, uh, former governors, top officials are coming for that book launch. So join on Friday. It's going to be another building. That is why we come on on Monday for you to prepare yourself towards that on Friday. So Toyos is a very busy person, so it's not going to be able to stay longer uh, than expected. So let's quickly just give him a clap and celebrate him. Let's join him on Friday. Love you, Toyosi. Have a very brilliant and beautiful day. Keep it up. We have together, we'll be giving you a lot of support that you want on the African portal. Thanks to everyone joining this broadcast. Uh, this is going to be the end to this program for today. And please go out there, go and grab the copy of the book for Toyo C is a book for everyone to read. Please go out there, go and grab the copy of the book. We come out here to actually promote him and to give him a support. This is what we do on the African portal. For anyone that is a writer or author of any book and you want us to put you on the spotlight, you want us to talk about your book and you want your or you want something you want to give back to your community, you can join us on the African Portal Radio. You can as well call me on plus 277-033584. It's number to call. I would like to hear from you. And as well, you can follow us in all our social media. You can also like our Facebook page. And as well, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, the African Portal Media House. Please, let's do it together. It's for Africa. It's one Africa. It's great Africa. So for Africa to great, we have to make ourselves one and we have to support ourselves. We have to embrace our diversity and we have to embrace ourselves and we have to support ourselves. You have to buy Africa for Africa to be great. If we stop buying Africa, then Africa will not be great. So let's buy Africa. Let's celebrate Africa. Let's make Africa one home and one continent whereby we can as well do things within ourselves. The border putting around us that, that differentiates us is just a way to divide them, to rule them. So know that at the back of your mind, that all the border you are seeing and the name calling you Tanzania, calling you Uganda and all those rights, it's just a system around us to divide them, to rule them. It's just the system. So get out of your head and let's embrace ourselves, buy Africa, support Africa, and it's a beautiful time on the African Portal Radio. Doyosi, thank you once again for coming out to be part of this show. Please join us on Friday. It's a book launch. It's going to be another beautiful time, and please be part of it. Sponsor, support him, buy the book, read it. It's a book full of information. Talk about his life. Toyo, like I told you earlier, is from Egba. This is a wrap up of this program. It's from Egba land, and it's also a kind of a young chum that is actually doing well for himself. He's working on a project on how to make sure there is electricity all over Africa. For that to happen, the free trade agreement needs to be uh, effective so that it will be able to move within African continent to find solution to the problem of electricity in Africa. Toyo, see, thank you very much once again for coming out to be part of. Of this show on the African Port. I will celebrate you and we'll give you a clap for a well done job. We actually give you a thumb up as well for well done job. You are doing so great for African continent and that's why we put you on the spotlight on the African portal. We will always support and we always showcase your work and we will always be part of your journey to make sure that we tell the rest of the world of 
what we have in Africa. From everyone listening to me, this will be the end to this broadcast for today. Please share it. Let it go viral and be part of what we are doing in this house. If you want to sponsor us or you want to support us, call me on the number on the screen. It's the number to call. As well, if God has laid anything in your mind or your heart to do for the African portal, please feel free to call me on the number on the screen. Thank you very much. I think Bella Yoruba, I do a book of law, a bow with two ye. It do you pull us all answer on the power, maybe you only let the Adula walk tea, oh she tacon tacon, or Mokone, oh she a rotten she or do, Tom Gunya, or to she a rotten we in a cat with Tom Fiorum, to find Tanasi Bobo, let us in Shadow Ladies Arabica, Tolon Sing Bathroom. I won't let the cat get out by lying no more in the share today, and while you are blow, a cat bay in Tani, a cat bunny, a ruga. I'm a Korean shall call you, wake on you, wait, you should watch your loyal job, Friday, Tom Boy, a jaddy Kelomara, or Moto Jossi, great the delighted. Child, eh, Eloma ra ke Eloma mo iwe yi noko joko kesi Eloma ka kesi ma mpa mo fun a woman yi ni la mafia dagba e toto ni la mafia rossi oni yon she olo be she e niteba fege e ku a e binu mon zon kwa kwa ya mafia be no be shu ni a tele se a si pena wo eni bada mpani kala ni teba le au lolo ni au kpada wa la kbare jubare au kpada wa ni o jo o la e kpada wa lo jo la o kala na won soro soro luri le di nigeria na nipo luri o kuto yi ni o jo ti ti o la iba jo ni bere kwa kwa o jo ni ti wa uruko Tell me your father. Look at me now. You did that, Musa. I'm more you sure about that. Samuel, you look sharp, Musa. I made a walk on that mountain for more money, money, money. I'm also seeing some kind of because the money you're just getting fat. You should go to jail. You're not lazy. You're not busy. 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 You're Lag baro sheda ni kwa ifu rojo da buto akpada wa ni agbara olon e ma shi ito yi ke sodo ri ke mwa kwa sota buje di ke mwa kwa mwa e jo lo kaki le jo lo kaki gwa gwa la ye e jaka wunyo mwa ne kwa toyo si grech di weto kwa ati sheto she o sone pa sone mwre kwa ibita wanti mbo uru kwa wangwa uru kwa yi dile wangwa yupe ibita wanti yi nene bo lo toru kwa wanti jade lo si sok bukwa ne kwa re na kwa du e o si to shala ye ne kwa anwa kwa ti e ni mwa ne kwa yi sheda ibita bi o si koni she kwa lwa yon mwa re o ni po mwa bi o si le alay lo wo inyo ni po ni lo wo mwa lo si to ni kwa to ni po mwa bi o si alay lo wo ki wana walo kula lay lo wo mwa bi o la lay lo wo shu bori da ju kwe o fi aye le ni o lo wo kiri ayo talata kwa mwa ba e ni kwa kwa mwa kwa ojo ki ito jo ojo ni ti wa iba jo si mwa ba Eni kwa kwa wa la bara e tumari. Ni la mafi a dagba e to yi ro si e shio e ya wati mbe wa. Ni lu badan adupe adupe kwa 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 yi. Danfo ni si shere la yi ni kondo ni lu badan. Te bara waro mwon danfo. Tu ba du wajou di babare. Ti mpa ma wanyo. Ishe lo mwala wo. Ishe mwala wo. Ishe mwala wo ni mwke tatan mwdi po. Feno mi ulu bombo. Tiri bombo. Ire ayo. Ata la hafi a yi du wa kuma ba e ni kwa 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 kwa. E jya ma fi ori okalara wa mwa bibi ori le de Nigeria. To wa ni ilu i badon. E da ma fori re je badon. Titi a wafi pade ni ojo mi ojo re. E ma ron tipe ili a ye ta wa ki ishe a wa lò. E mwgo ta wa si ishe ili a ye pade kwa ta. A re ishe na re ka. A re ka ni ma ba yere mwon. O ti ba mi o do jo mi o do jo re. O ti da wa. O jo ka inje e shiki. O jo ki e jaw nye. O ta ton ishe lo mwa si yo. So much of those places in the world we are living That if I love to see, then she gon' be Then she ain't your baba Then she ain't your baba Give me your more and more Cause I'll pay you money Then she ain't your baba Then she tell us to go over Give me your more and more Thank you.